First story. My wife stole our eight-month-old son and left me after I cheated with my school friend. But she was attractive and flirty, like every man falls for her. How can I make my wife reconcile? Help me. I feel like this is pretty much Reddit self-harm, which is why I'm obviously using a throwaway account. To get some better understanding of my situation, let me go back in time and explain a bit. My wife and I have been a couple for five years, married for two, and have an eight-month-old son and I consider them both my whole world. I just couldn't imagine life without them. The pregnancy was difficult for the both of us, but mostly for my wife for obvious reasons. She was bedridden for the majority of the pregnancy, so I had to do most of the house chores, shopping, etc. That's just normal though, and I never felt like my wife tried to take advantage of the situation. I know she would have much preferred to have the strength to do it herself. She had a lot of mood swings, and the hormones were just going crazy. She was never mad though. Just sad and worried that she'd be a bad mother, or that there would be something wrong with the baby. By the end of her pregnancy, we ended up going to the hospital like 15 times just to listen to the baby's heartbeats because she was convinced something was wrong. It was impossible to be rational with her or tell her not to worry. She just said, I just feel something is wrong, I can't help it. Our son was born without any complications and perfectly healthy as well. During the pregnancy, we were barely ever intimate aside from snuggling and kissing. She wasn't comfortable with the idea of sex while pregnant and, again, worried that it would have hurt the baby somehow. We had oral as X on occasions, but they were rare and far between. Our situation didn't improve after our son was born either, because she was always too exhausted or in too much pain down there. About our living situation. I'm a university student, so my wife is the one who works and provides for our family. From Monday to Thursday, I'm at school while she is home with our son. And from Friday to Sunday, she works double shifts each day while I take care of our son. I told my wife a few days ago, I was going over to my classmates let's call her Jenny House because we had both failed our exam back in May and wanted to prepare for the re-exam our university offered about two weeks before the semester starts. I kissed my wife and son goodbye and told her I'd call when I'm on the way home. I'm being completely honest when I say that I had no other intentions in mind when I drove to Jenny's house that day. Now, let me just tell you about Jenny a bit. She is an extremely attractive woman with a very bubbly and flirty personality. The kind of woman who drive any man insane, really. She has always been very flirtatious with everyone, though, guys and girls, not just me. So I never figured that she had something for me. A married man with a kid. I don't want to go into too many details of what happened at her house, because honestly, it just feels awkward and wrong to even think about it. But it went from what I perceived as innocent flirting to kissing and stroking each other. And, yes, we slept together. What the hell was I thinking? Nothing. I was a dumb F that didn't think about it at all. In my mind, I was just too focused on how good it felt to share such a passionate moment. But when it was all over, I regretted it immediately and began to panic. Jenny didn't seem all too troubled by what we had done, as she was ready to resume our study session. I just couldn't do that though, so I left her house as quickly as possible. I was afraid to drive home that day and face my wife. A thousand scenarios played in my mind, each worse than the other, and I was in doubt about whether to tell her or keep it a secret. It was a constant battle between my conscious and my selfish needs. Ended up just driving around town for an hour before finally mustering up the courage to go home. When I arrived home, I was greeted by the sight of my wife sitting on the couch just playing games while our son was napping on her chest. An absolutely beautiful sight, and I lost it. It must have shown well, because my wife asked what was amiss, and I confessed. I told her everything about what had happened, along with stupid bullsh tea excuses, and about a thousand sorries. My wife just stared at me in silence. Not a single word came out of her mouth. Blank expression. I couldn't tell what she was thinking. I wish she would have just screamed at me in that moment. But instead she got up, put our son in the baby seat, and went to the bedroom to pack a bag faster than humanly possible. I kept asking her. Where are you going? But she just ignored me and eventually left the house, got into the car, and drove away. A few minutes later, I received a text message from her that said, Going to my parents' house. I've tried texting and calling her numerous times, but she won't answer. I f it up big time, and I don't know what to do. I know I don't deserve a second chance, but I just can't lose them. How can I convince her something like this will never happen again? How can I make her understand I never meant to hurt her or ruin what we had? TLDR. I cheated on my wife with my classmate Jenny. My wife is at her parents' house with our son and won't talk to me. Update. After reading all of your comments, 
it became even more apparent that I was making even more excuses, trying to pin the blame on anyone but me, justifying my actions. I guess I just didn't want to think of myself as the kind of man who would do something so horrible to his family. Between all the wallowing in self-pity, I decided to be productive. Man, up to the fact that I f ed up and tried to do at least something right. I called my old boss to ask if there was anything available I used to work as a barista. I was in luck because they needed someone experienced for the morning shifts during weekends. Next up, a place to stay. At this point, I didn't know what my wife wanted or what to expect. A divorce, a break. But I sort of prepared for the worst and assumed that my wife was going to divorce me. And since the house is in her name, then I should be the one moving out. My parents or relatives weren't an option, though none of them live even remotely near. So by a long shot I ended up asking my high school friend on Facebook if I could crash at his place for a few days, briefly explaining my situation to him. He told me what a dumbbars I am, and how I screwed up majorly no arguments there. But yes, I could move in with him and his roommate. I don't know why I was in such a rush to move out before even knowing how things would end. I tried to think from my wife's perspective, and figured that I didn't want to prevent her from going back home, just because of my presence. Or maybe I was just trying to protect myself again. I sent my wife a message informing her about my job and me moving out. I also added that I wouldn't try to contact her further, unless she wanted me to. And if there was anything I could do for her, she needed to just ask. She replied, alright. So for a couple of weeks, my life just went on automatic. Sleep, eat, school, work. Rinse and repeat. While trying not to think too much about my future. I started to accept the possibility that I had lost my wife forever. But my son. No, that was the most terrifying idea. That I would lose custody of him and never see my son again, F. Thinking of him, his smile, laughter, and the peaceful look on his face when he is sound asleep just made me teary and angry at myself. Then it happened. My wife called, which, under normal circumstances, would have been surprising already because she hates talking on the phone social anxiety. At that moment, it just felt like there were a million things I wanted to say to her, but instead I shut up and listened. She told me, in short, how upset she was, how hurt she felt, betrayed, humiliated, and requested that we meet up in person to discuss matters. First she wanted to meet up in a coffee shop, but changed her mind and told me to drive over to her parents' house. She had apparently been staying there the whole time, never returning home while her parents would take our son for a walk. There certainly were mixed feelings when I saw my wife for the first time in weeks, months, even by now. I didn't dare to think about what might come, so I tried to keep my mind as blank as possible. She got all teary and hugged me tightly as I approached her. Definitely not the reaction I had expected. But I embraced her back while I felt the tears building up. And we just stood there on the drive away for. Not even gonna guess how long it was. It just felt like forever. Eventually we got inside and had a talk. A lengthy, heartfelt talk. My wife told me what she had been up to. What had been going through her mind. All the emotions and our future. It was clear that her feelings were conflicted. Unable to decide whether she wanted to give me, us, a second chance. I had been pretty quiet during our discussion and mostly just listened. But this is when I chimed in and told her that she shouldn't feel obligated to give me a second chance just because of our son. This may sound a bit weird and contradicting coming from me, but I just really felt that if my wife was going to give me a new chance, it should be because there is something salvageable, not because of possibly guilt. She completely agreed and said that while she hasn't forgiven me, she wants to try again. It was pretty interesting how she worded it, because she said something along the line of, I am giving up this old relationship. I want us to build a new relationship, even if it is on a shaky foundation. There were far more things we discussed, regarding what had happened and our future. But the bottom line is that we are not separating. We are moving back home together soon. But that doesn't mean that things are going to be all fine and dandy. It's just a slow process we have begun to start something new. I am nervous but hopeful. TLDR. Moved out, got a weekend job, was pretty much prepared for my wife to leave me when she decided to give me a second chance. Comments. Papaduro. Side question. If she cheated on you, with the same circumstances as your infidelity, would you forgive or leave? OP. If it was physical cheating, I could most likely forgive. But if it was emotional cheating, I don't know, that'd be a lot tougher to deal with. Second story. My pick-me arse ex-best friend seduced my husband and stole him, ruining our marriage. So, from the bottom of my heart, F you, you homewrecking bee. May you face all the failures in your life. I'm sure you're wondering why all of a sudden I exited every group chat you are a part of. 
Why you can no longer find me on social media? Why even with your birthday coming up, Christmas passed, New Year's passed, Valentine's Day passed, you haven't heard a effing word from me. My husband is in love with you. You and him have ruined my life. I've loved you since we were toddlers, toddlers. I barely remember life without you. We're 30 years old, and your insecure arse put your own confidence boosts above our friendship. You're one of the most beautiful girls I know. We tell you that every effing time we see you. The girls and I tell you how gorgeous you are and how it's insane that you won't date or too scared to date. Regardless of how I side-eye at you wearing certain SHT around my husband when we're supposed to be having casual get-togethers, I still tell you that you look amazing. And even though it irks me at how you wanna play drunk B, I'm the lightweight, and it took 20 watered arse down shots for me to get buzzed. But all of a sudden you're wasted after 5 shots. B, please and start to remove clothes in front of him. I still tucked you in and tried to take care of you. My husband admitted he gets your vibe, and he can't get you out of his head. That he thinks that for the last two years, he has been falling for you. You. The last time you were here for Friendsgiving, you and him locked eyes for a second when we were eating. And you took it upon yourself to start sucking some chips like if you were blowing a cork as you sat across from him. We were all like, okay, now, B, damn, why are you eating it like that? And you just acted like, what? As the night progressed, everyone kept drinking. But me because I wanted to stay as aware as possible. I watched how he stared at your dance and how uncomfortable he got when you told your SHT blind date story. You took it upon yourself to start talking about your breasts in front of him, and you shook your arse in his direction as he walked by you to a song that wasn't even an arse-shaking song. Those next few days here were awful. I interrogated him and asked him what TF is going on with y'all because that SHT wasn't okay. You've done lots of pick-me arse SHT here like wearing a maxi skirt. But somehow that SHT would raise itself damn near to where we could all see your underwear, and you not pulling it down but complaining you're cold, like undressing halfway through my house while asking me for comfy clothes, and when I was like, girl, what are you doing? You played dumb. But you've never been so effing disrespectful like that night. He would swear on God and on his mom, his life, our kids, that he only wanted me, and that he only loved me, that you weren't SHT to him and that you were nothing but the stupid one in my friend group that he couldn't care less about you. Liar. I was irritated with you and didn't reply to anything you would send because I wanted you to ask me what was wrong. I wanted you to be oblivious to what you had done and be like, hello, where are you, friend? But no. So tell me why working through issues this effort, and I decide we need to lay everything out on the table. I ask about you, because even though we haven't talked in months, that SHT wasn't sitting right in my spirit. Call me a bruja witch or something. But I effing knew what I knew. I asked him if there was something going on with y'all. And he goes. I never touched her. And we don't talk or message. I only see her when she comes over. But she's in my heart. In your heart. You have feelings for her like a crush or more than that. More. I think I might have loved her. B. When I tell you I had the air sucked out of my body. Tanto a That much though? I asked him if every time he would suggest you guys come over. Was that for him to get his fix to see you? And this mother effer said. I would tell you to have them over when you were down, because I know you love having your friends around, and they make you laugh and smile. But I can honestly say I had you message them to come over once so I could see her. I missed her. Insert my immediate sobs. I got up and went outside on a walk, because I felt like I was going to have a panic attack and throw up. I didn't believe him when he said he loved you past tense. So when I got back, of course he's on my arse trying to smother TF out of me even though I kept telling him to leave me TF alone, and he's trying to hold me, wanting to apologize, and I keep saying, okay, but you're in love with her present tense. Till he eventually started changing the wording, and stopped saying loved and using love. He said, believe me, I hate that she's in there. I hate it. I hate her for getting in there. I don't know how it happened. I'm sorry. I heaved and heaved and heaved, but nothing came up. I was that sick to my stomach. I have been with his arse since we were 16. You know all the bullshit we've had to overcome. You know what hell we went through with my in-laws at the beginning of my marriage. You and the girls were there to help put me back together. Look, I don't know if you have feelings for him too, or if you just use him to get your fix at feeling desired and feeling wanted, because you're too much of a pussycat to find an available man to get that from. I don't know if you're jealous that I'm not as pretty as you, and yet I have a long-time partner supposed to be 13 years old next month, married, children, and own my own house all before 30. And you're as beautiful as you are, haven't been in a serious relationship since high school, 30 years old with no kids, still living at home with your parents. I almost hope you have feelings for him, that it came out of nowhere, 
and that it was accidental and never meant to happen, and that it wasn't the latter of you hating my life and what I have built so you could try to see if you could mess it up. Either way, I'm done with you. Maybe I might be willing to work on things with him. Maybe because sometimes couples are able to get over infidelity him falling in love with someone else is absolutely an infidelity to our vows. You, on the other hand, were my best friend for the last 27 years of my life. How could you? You had my love, you had my confidence, and you had my support. Only for me to look back and see that you were nothing but a snake in my garden. You will forever be one of the biggest, harshest, life-shattering heartbreaks I will ever have. Bye. I'm going to try my best to not wish this karma on you. But F man. I effing hate you. Edit. Firstly, thank you to everyone who had sent me a DM or commented on here, wishing the best for me. Some of y'all, especially in my DMs, have really made me laugh and have brought me out of this Category 5 hurricane volcanic monsoon ball of rage and sadness I feel. Even if only for a few seconds. Thank you. I dearly love to laugh. While I feel like I'm drowning all on my own, so many of you have been in similar situations. And that truly, truly pains me that anyone else has ever felt this darkness I feel right now. I wouldn't wish this on anyone except maybe these rat SHT people. And even then I feel bad for wishing bad on someone. The same healing y'all wish for me, I wish for y'all. Secondly, to all the people who are continuing to call me out for focusing on her, rather than talking about his role in this. Read the title. This is specifically meant for her. I don't have to write my truths and feelings out to him here on Reddit because he's getting that SHT to his face. I don't have the luxury of cutting him out and ghosting him the way I did her because we share the same house, we share the same space, and we share the same kids. I'm forced to deal with his being in my presence, and he's forced to deal with my rage head on so all of y'all that want to minimize what he did because he didn't touch her. Can feel sorry for him because I sure don't. I have zero intentions of letting her back into my life or ever seeing her within my reasonable control ever again regardless of how my marriage plays out. If I pick up and find another man in the future, I would never be able to have her around my home comfortably again. And after all of this, I think I deserve that peace. This Rachard vent was targeted towards her because she deserves to see her roll dead on and carry that weight on her effing back. She doesn't get to put her load on him because she knew what she was doing. She has to carry what she did to me all on her own. The same way he has to carry what he not only did to me, but what he did to our family all on his own. One day I will have to forgive this man, even if I leave him, because we have children to raise. My time with him will never be done because of them. Romantically, I don't know if I'll ever be able to deal with his arse ever again, but I will eventually have to get to a point when I can at least be cordial and platonic with him for the sake of my children. I will have to bring myself to forgive him so that I can continue to try to raise my children in a stable family life. Even if it's a broken family, that's what they deserve out of me. They deserve to have a father that will continue to try and grow and better himself, even if it's not for me. They deserve to have a mother that has peace in her heart, even if she's had a lot of heartbreak. They deserve to have us around and not carry the burden of our history. Grab a hold of their peace and stress. They deserve good parents, even if the parents can't make it work. This one is a petty point. To you annoying people who keep sh teating your pants about me not putting in paragraphs or it being too hard to read for you, I don't care. I hope that B struggles to follow along too. What the F do I look like trying to make her life easier by giving her paragraphs? One day I might not wish her harm, karma, or any bad juju. But my petty arse will probably always wish these efforts, every little minor inconvenience in life. Like having to read a wall of text. Lastly, some of you have pointed out my comment history, where I talk about having other issues with my husband quite a few months ago. Yes, I was struggling with feeling insufficient and unheard in my marriage. Yes, I wasn't sure if I was still in love with him, because I was going above and beyond to try and make things good for us, and I was getting desperate to try anything. What y'all are failing to see is that marriage problems and emotions come and go. They hit in waves. As someone pointed out in the comments, marriage has lows, and then even lower spots. And then you hit a high that makes every low worth it. I make the best effort I humanly can to try and better what I can, to see if what I built was actually worth it. What I didn't know was that eight months ago, when I was begging for him to put more effort in, he was already in love with someone else for a year and a half. That's why we were where we were. I'm not a perfect patty. I know my strengths and my weaknesses. I know what I'm good at, and I know where I can improve. I know I'm mature and immature all in the same breath. I also know venting my anger out for her is better than me telling her face to face I know myself. I'd rather deal with the fall out of my darkness here to strangers on the internet than inside jail. 
I know I was a good wife and a good friend. And I know I didn't deserve this behavior and hurt and betrayal from either of them. You guys can judge all you want. I know what I am. And I know who I am. I know I'll be fine one day. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.